Swan Island Airport down below. Oh. Opened up in 1927, and Lindbergh was there to dedicate the airport, 27. Um, it was also um, it was a dry dock to repair ships, and it was also where Tex Rankin had, um, he had an airport down there as well, or used, used part of the airport. Tex Rankin was a stunt flyer, and um, he trained women to fly, which is rare back then, and he trained a lot of future World War II pilots. Um, and then he also had a location at the east end of Delta Park as well. But this was, and then after um, they moved from here in, in 1940 to 54th and Marine Drive, it became a heliport for helicopters. So the same building still stood for some time. It's quite a stately, fancy looking building actually. The one that was built in 1927. Where that ties in with the St. John's Bridge, by the way, is that it was pretty much mandated at that time that they made them bumblebee, yellow and black, so that the airplanes could see them. So Steinman, who designed the bridge, wanted it to be green to match the West Hills. And so the compromise was if Steinman would put lights on top of the, the bridge, then he could have his green bridge. And that's what the compromise was. But they waited until 19, or, or waited until St. Patrick's Day to uh, announce that the uh, color of the bridge was going to be green. <laughs> so this is the home of uh, Joe Carson, who was the mayor during the 34 strike, corner of uh, Willamette and, uh, and Fowler. And the address appears to be on Fowler at. 7119 North Fowler. And so I knocked on this guy's door one day, and uh, it's a few years back, and I said, you know, a mayor lived here. He said, yeah, I don't know who it was, though. I said, yeah, it was Joe Carson. <laughs> so I told him about his house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's kind of cool looking house. Oh, now he was to take out the same thing. <laughs> Neat homes in through here. Some are more modest, you know. I'm gonna turn around and avoid the lumbar here. Yeah. And the interview that lady last summer was 100 years old. Nebius is her name? Her husband's class in 1932 at Roosevelt. She's Jewish. They would not let her play. Uh, she was like a champion tennis player. They wouldn't uh, let her play at the Multnomah Athletic Club because she was Jewish. Oh. But her family wasn't exactly pleased that her husband was not Jewish and she was going to marry him. Uh -huh. This is embarrassing to say, but I've never been down to see where the Swan Island Airport was down there. Yeah, it's right here in my neck of the woods. <laughs> Again, University of Portland. It wasn't built as University of Portland at the time, but it was built in 1891. It changed hands more, more than once. And there is one of the halls there that goes back to that, that time period. I'm sorry, I totally missed what you're Oh, that's okay. That's about the university? Yeah. Yeah, it was built in 1891 originally. So. Um, yeah, there's stories about some of the students coming up, you know, by boat to attend the university and so forth. <laughs> and I attended there um, under federal money for police officers in the late 70s. This is the Mock family home. Uh, Mr. Mock and his family only lived there for a short period of time, but the home still stands. It's on the Columbia Park Annex property. And the same gentleman that owns that great big brick house in Denver um, owns that home as well. I forget his name now, but he is in full intention to restore the home. I'm going to head down towards um, St. John's Bridge and Cathedral Park. You also have the history of the grocery stores in the area because back in the day they didn't have well Fred Myers was in the area like in around 50 or so 
but they're usually mom and pop grocery stores. Again, ours is Bradley's grocery store. My dad would, every Friday, he would go in there and pay his, his bill. Um, I would pick up the groceries for dinner that night. Mom would do the list on a little notepad. I would take it up to Bradley's store. It was, they had vegetables, they had meat, they had everything. Mr. Bradley would keep track of it. Dad would pay it at the end of the week or, or on Friday. And so it was pay and take it. Uh, in fact, on Facebook right now, they've got people naming all these different locations. And there was one, well, it would, in fact, where um, the income tax place was on, on South Jersey and Polk. That was uh, Ralph, um, I want to say Matheson, something like that. He went to Roswell High School. Um, he, um, uh, and then he worked there during, uh, you know, during his school year. He would work there at the store. Two other gentlemen owned it. He was attending the, I think, the University of Oregon, and um, he had an opportunity to buy the store. So before he graduated, he went ahead and bought the store. He would live to be, I think, 100 years old, and he had that store for years and years and years. So the local kids talk about how they would steal candy from the store. I think he knew that they were taking the candy because <laughs> there's too many kids that said that they were taking the candy. But um, he had that store all those years, and he was another example of a mom and pop grocery store. On Fessenden, there was Shamrock. I didn't go to that one because it was too far out. There was another one right in about here on Willamette and Van Houten. That was an old-time grocery store. That was open until like 15, 20 years ago. And then the um, Portway Tavern was a grocery store as well. Keep in mind, you cannot sell alcohol during the Prohibition. So some of the uh, local taverns became grocery stores. Uh. But what, by the way, one way they would get around the alcohol prohibition was if your doctor prescribed alcohol for you, they would they would they would uh, give you alcohol. <laughs> and then there were those like my grandfather that was making whatever he was making in his bathtub, <laughs> which Uncle Rod and I tried by the way at, at 15 years old. I can still remember we, we put too much yeast yeast in the bottles or something. So they're in Rodney's basement. We had the old oh, crock no. and stuff. And every once in a while, in the middle of the night, like, bang! <laughs> the bottle would explode in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh, my. So now we're, we're coming on the, again, the railroad cut, but instead of on Lombard, we're on Willamette side. And you also have the history of the uh, gas stations, automotive places, as well as the grocery stores. This is a great view of the bridge right here and there's some old photographs that show this so once the St. John's Bridge was built in 1931 then they had to rename that something the railroad bridge and this is uh, Tom Stubblefield's house here and this was Dave Callison's house as well okay. not sure what the address is but um, as Tom Stubblefield will tell you he bought it on a handshake and uh, Dave Callison wanted the house back later but, uh, <laughs> Phil Phil didn't want to sell it, sell it, sell it to him. And um, so here's the Portway Tavern that goes way, way back. Um, some of the old timers talked about going here and here as kids and, and buying milk. The access road was right here that went down to the um, the, the waterfront down there. Where that old ship is. Yeah. Can you still access the ship? Uh, wait, uh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, which ship are you referring to? There's like a <laughs> boat on the beach that's... Now that, I'm not sure about. <laughs> what we're coming up on right now, and I should have... <laughs> um, we're coming up on Dr. Graves' home. And uh, again, Dr. Graves was a female doctor in St. John's, worked here for years and years. And Lewis Stone, who was part, actually part of my group, was born in 1920. And Dr. Graves delivered. <laughs> so this is on the corner of, um, this is Crawford. Oh, oh, this, this, this location here. Um, one of Simon Benson's sons owned this mansion. Looks like 70. 654 was probably like the servants' quarters, um, but it's quite a stately home. They don't say no trespassing, they actually drive around. No, <laughs> private residence. But 
Um, so, oh my gosh, I remember that was for sale not that long ago for like five hundred thousand dollars, half a Jeez. million. <laughs> so that's really cool. And then you see the, the railroad bridge here as well. In the early seventies, uh, New Year's Eve. Uh, I don't know what went wrong, but one of the trains went in the water. So this is cool. I'd forgotten about that. It's it's referred to as the Benson Cheney House, I think, because the Cheneys owned it after them. One of the descendants of the Bensons. I told him this was here, and he says never heard of it. I says, yeah, let me educate. I gave him the information on it. And yeah, that was it was part of uh, one of Benson's sons owned it for a while. And then they got a divorce or something. This is a greenhouse. This is like the servants' quarters right here. <laughs> and then again, this is Polk and Crawford. We're actually on uh, Crawford. And so this old home back in here, it looks like 7706, was belonged to Dr. Graves. Oh. And it was her um, uh, grandparents that lived in St. John's and some of the pioneers. So one of the photographs featured in that uh, St. John's Review I read recently from 1954, there's a repeat of 1904, it has a picture that Dr. Graves had presented to them. So one of, one of the older streets here, St. John's Bridge is one of the most photographed bridges around. It opened up June 13th, 1931. Wow, what a view. Oh my gosh, look at the road too. Wow. <laughs> Circles around or something. Yeah, I'm curious, huh? It's like kamikaze pilot, so. I didn't know this road was down there. I should know that. It's old homes, obviously. Yeah. Because the street signs there, it's public road. Bradford. Bradford and Tyler. Well, they don't get much more uh, waterfront than that. It's like a dead end here, so we'll kind of turn around. Well, let's go around. And one of the older homes in St. John's is down here as well. Um, I got the history of that, unless it's already been torn down. Van Buren. Always more to learn. Does that go up or is that a drive? Wow. I didn't know this was here. I can't either. I can't imagine there'd be too much through traffic down Yeah. There. <laughs> um, let's go around. Yeah, there is that. That's what I'm gonna access. Yeah. And Wayne Smith, his house was just around the corner here. Robin still lives there. And his son. Sometimes, if I want to bypass the through the intersection, I'll go on the other side of Willamette, or I'll go this side. normal car. Which is dead end. This is dead end. I'm going right around, aren't I? McEnroe's house right there. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Years ago. Yeah. Now that family goes back a long, long ways. McEnroe's? Yeah. Well, I did end up coming down the dead end, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an They're old house there. Look at that. Dead end. They were just a gravel road. Okay. <laughs> They're gravel roads. Hmm. <laughs> that one right there. That one holds too. Both of them do. Is that the whole? And that one. These look, these 
these are old. Oh yeah. I wonder what some of the original homes were, like the oldest ones in St. John's that are still standing. There's one down here. Near McKinney's old place. Yeah. Oh, it's alright buddy, we're not going to get stuck in the grass. Well, let's watch this guy come through and see what it looks like. Paved the way for me, so to speak. I want to get some by you. Oh, we're going to go in here by March. Yeah, we are. Oh, Fort's crossing. <laughs> Yeah, there's this old home. It was up for sale. The white one? Yeah, it goes, that goes way back eight, 1800s, I think, or you know, around 1900. Um, and I got pictures of an old car here. If you look at those windows, when the windows are narrow like that and tall, and they're just old. These are the three dancing Nigger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Call Papa Lock. And I get, um, the St. John's Bridge area. So, Haas Auto Wrecking. Um, they, well, in fact, that's where the engine came from for Grandma Jones's car. Um, and I got pic pictures of the old auto wrecking lot. And then, so Howard Galbraith, the unofficial mayor of St. John's, class of 1930, um, strong, staunch advocate for St. John's. He tried to get a planetarium down where the uh, um, Ch Chimney Park is. Came really close. Huge um, arrowhead collection. And uh, his son still has it, Roger. Roger still lives in the old family home in North Kalamit, the 9800 block. Now, Grandma Joan knew him really well. A lot of history down here as you get close to the waterfront because, again, um, the businesses were doing uh, business from the water. Yeah. With the ships and so forth. And during uh, alcohol prohibition, they're arresting longshoremen and merchant <laughs> seamen for importing alcohol, of all things. So, uh, this is where Haw's auto wrecking was. It was on this street, right in through. Oh no, it wasn't. Wait a minute. It's one more. One more. Correction. Disorientation. <laughs> was the ship back there? The Th that was the I... boat. That was. <laughs> was it there? No. There's no. There's like a crashed boat on the beach down by I... Port Way Tavern. Oh, oh. It's like falling apart. It was made of wood. No, there was a there's a like a boat here. Like the the, the Ark of St. John's. Noah's Ark of St. John's. Yeah. There is also um, a train caboose next to it. I didn't know that. But did we see the boat? No? Not okay. the one I'm talking about. Okay. The one I'm talking about, it's it's like a hike down to the water. It's on, It's in the water still. Yeah, I remember that one. This is the Cathedral Park, and of course they have the annual jazz festival right here that Norman Sylvester plays in. But this is a wrecking yard right here. This is how's auto wrecking. Mm -hmm. And so um, Howard Galbraith, when he passed away, and we are now on the corner of North Pittsburgh and Crawford, so he um, said, don't have a, you know, a funeral for me. He says, have a celebration. And so they did. And uh, essentially, he helped advocate for millions of dollars for Cathedral Park. And also, he's part of the, the original jazz festival. Oh, okay. So when I was growing up, they didn't have the developed park over here. Um, they, this was it. And you would come down here. And they had the, the boat docks down here, and we would fish off the docks as kids with a dozen night crawlers or dough balls or corn or whatever. And we would go out there, and Grandma Joan would pick us up 
Um, McCormick and Baxter was a creosote factory, and they kind of kept it a secret, all the pollutions they were putting into the river. Creosote, one summer there was some St. John's boys in the water and their legs started burning. Uh -oh. And they couldn't figure out why their legs started burning. Well, it was because of those two boys that walked into that creosote, the creosote was discovered in the, in the Willamette River. So th this is the dock that I used to come down to when I was a kid. And of course you can see um, Kaylee's teacher, Ms. McNamara, wanted to know why it was called Cathedral Park. So as you look down from up above, as we look down from North Edison, you'll see it looks like cathedral windows, right? Mm -hmm. And this is also the site where they would have, um, before the bridge was put in 31, the mode of transportation was ferry boats. And we covered the names of those ferry boats yesterday. One of them was named James John to honor James John. Huh. And his home was, was right in here along the, the river bank. And, uh, and we'd fish here. And I wasn't much for swimming here. It didn't kind of really appeal to me. <laughs> when did this stop being a, a junkyard? Um, around um, in the 70s, I think. We, you know, the, the history is there as far as the documentation. As far as, and there are still some haws. I see them on Facebook. And I've actually talked with some of them oh. that, are, that are descendants of the owner of the wrecking yard. And there is a um, plaque within walking distance. And if they want to keep on a little bit of exercise. Well, you're not going to get out. Hmm? No, no, okay. That's fine. We'll so, never get them back in. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, it's over here. And uh, it depicts the history of St. John's um, all the way from the Native Americans. And it's on the path, the walking path over here. Because I was looking for a memorial for Howard Galbraith. Well, Howard Galbraith is part of that that dedication to um, uh, St. John's, or, or preserving the history, a, Howard, a memorial to Howard Galbraith. And we're going to move over here to Woolen Mill Hill, or what we, we called Will Mill Hill, because we didn't know what we were talking about as kids. <laughs> And the hill that I used to go down to when it was snowing and icy. Because when I was growing up, there was some pretty good ice and snowstorms. It was Bernie's Hill. That was on St. John's Avenue from Edison. Or Lamb to Edison. And um, let's see what remains of the woolen mill. And they closed down in 1960. It was for whatever reason. It was just time. So now we have Moonstruck ch chocolate. Very important to know. That was kind of our motor story. It looked like or sounded like when we cut the mufflers off. <laughs> so this was all woolen, the woolen mills in through here. Oh, okay. And it was big, and they employed a lot of people. It was within walking distance. So if you had a home here, you could walk here to work, to yeah. and from work. And you'd come all the way down, three blocks, all the way to the railroad tracks. Your sled would slowly start to slow down. <laughs> and then they expanded over to this side. Because the other one was the boat dock originally over there. And then they decided to expand here. Terry Shrunk and I confirmed that recently with one of the friends I used to hang out with. Terry Shrunk actually advocated for St. John's. He lived here his entire life. He grew up here. His parents came from Silverton, Oregon. Um, very active family. His sister was um, active in the military during World War II. Um, and so being mayor from 57 to 72, he took care of St. John's. There's some really cool pictures of Terry Shrunk with, with Elvis Presley. 57 when he arrives, you know, and you can tell by Terry Shrunk's demeanor. He's like he's gonna dominate Elvis No, you know, this Memphis boy is not gonna dominate st. John's boy, you know, <laughs> there's the way he's, his handshake and so forth but It's a beautiful beautiful bridge and it's one of those photograph bridges different times of the day different times of the year But again, this is where um, the, the the boat launch would be the ferry boat in through here and then they would be on the other side or some of the ferry boats would go towards like Savvy's Island, or they would go to downtown Portland. Oh. Because again, prior to the, the roads being developed, the, one of the major modes of transportation was by boat. Marilyn Jower talked about her grandfather, um, which would have been Juan, 
um, taking, the, he would catch the ferry boat here, go over to the other side, buy his, you know, food, vegetables, and so forth. Um, somewhere on the other side, whether it be Lytton or downtown Portland, wherever, then he'd come back across the river. And you could be, they had cars or passengers, and they had a lot of passengers. <laughs> and they had a regular ferry boat schedule. So, oh, you're going to catch the, the 5 p.m. ferry boat, yeah. you know. But again, James John was one of the, uh, the, the folks that, um, uh, he was, I think he was like the first person that operated a boat across the river. Um, you had a lot of famous people here, again, some heroes. I mean, Kenneth uh, Ballou is, was one of them. Kenneth Ballou was a local family. His family was pioneers here. And he was um, in World War II. I think it was the Normandy invasion, Battle of the Bulge. He was in some serious battles, survived that. Then he fought in the Korean War. He lost a leg during the Korean War. And then he was Secretary of the Army, and I think the Secretary of the Navy as well at a, at a different point. Um, during the Nixon administration, I think. The local boy, he was graduated in the late 1930s. Um, you had people um, like uh, Rawls, Rawls was his name. Rawls worked here. He was um, went to Roosevelt High School. He, uh, he, he graduates. Working here, he buys a brand, he buys a brand new Pontiac uh, before the war. He gets married. Um, he's a B-17 bomber pilot, and his um, his name of his B-17 bomber is the Casey Jones, and his plane is shot down. Mm. And there's only one survivor, and he's not one of them. And, but his plane is honored in one of the museums in England. He is one of many uh, local war heroes. So this would have been the, the backside of the uh, woolen mills. I've got some great pictures of that. Fortunately, took, people took pictures. So this is the top of the hill. This is North uh, Edison at Baltimore, and this is where they would close the, close it off, and you would set your sled up here at the top of the hill. <laughs> and sometimes, if you were brave, you'd put another person on your back, and you would go down all the way to the bottom of the railroad tracks. So, a lot of, of old historical family homes. Mike Reese, the current uh, sheriff of Multnomah County, uh, grew up on Edison near Catlin, right in this neighborhood, right in through here. Uh, his in, during school, his name, last name was Poole, but um, he took on Reese later on. But he was a local boy. I think he went to the James John School. Here, you'll every once in a while you'll get you'll see a hint of some of the older homes. Mm -hmm. And the question always comes up: Well, what's the oldest home in St. John's? I don't know. Well, we just saw one of them down on North Richmond. And we're going to come up on a, um, oh, I should have went up to Willamette, then I'll go back as well. So, when I was delivering newspapers in the 1960s, there was an older couple who lived down here in North Edison. We'll show, I'll show you the home in a moment. They're, they were older, and then, so, as I'm doing my research for the uh, Roseville High School Veterans Memorial, I came across a, some research, in fact, it's in these history books right here. Um, there's mother and father, Nellie, and I think, George Miles, and um, so, and then there's sons and a daughter, and one son is is uh, Bill or William Miles, another one is Robert Miles, and then when I did my, I was reading 1943 St. John's Review, here they're, they're noting Robert Miles is home on furlough, he's home on leave, but what was going to happen a year later, Robert Miles would lose his life during the Normandy invasion, but his brother Bill was a, because we weren't in the war yet, uh, he was a Royal Air Force pilot, an RAF pilot. And so then once we got in the war, then he um, he became a pilot for the U.S. Air Force. So this was Bernie's Hill. This 